we've got senator roy blunt joining us right now who voted yes for this ceiling hike today and i think you had effectively said you did so senator uh begrudgingly but it was pretty much the only game in town right well i, I thought it was the it was the best possible deal today not the best deal possible but the best possible deal today uh, and you know i think what uh, moody's is saying is what i've been saying and, and others have been saying for months now that how we deal with the debt ceiling matters but it doesn't matter uh, any more than how we deal with future spending discipline you know, we're spending 25 percent of gdp now at the federal level 25 percent higher than we were for the 40-year average that ended in January 2009, uh, and we spent 19% of GDP in 2008, and so this is a huge repositioning of the government no, relative no, no, to the yeah, rest no, of no, the uh, I think what society. They're saying, uh, yeah. I'm sorry, sir, but they're saying we commend you for that effort. We just want to, I guess it's sort of like someone committing to a diet or getting in shape. We want to see where you are right. a week or two or three or four right. weeks from now. Right. Where will Congress be a week or two or three or four months from now? when we're looking at the second wave of this debt crackdown where that will have this committee of 12, mm -hmm. six Republicans, six Democrats following up on cuts that you promised to make? Well, I think there's a real chance that this committee can work. Uh, you can solve big problems in divided government. Uh, it doesn't have the normal barrier in the Senate of 60 votes. It has 51 votes. But I think generally on what we did today, the course is relatively certain for the next two years. After that, it all depends on the 2012 election. But I think our top line spending number is now set for this year and next year. Uh, if the committee doesn't work, you're going to have mandatory cuts. So we know we're going to get close to that two and a half or so trillion dollar number in spending reductions over the 10 year window. But, you know, uh, and I think so, we stay it, there. It's impressive. I, and, and, and we should look at this and look at the half full mm -hmm. glass first. And, you know, before we're looking at just a hike in the debt ceiling without any corresponding cuts. So I think all sides are to be commended for bringing it to the point where we've got a, a move toward, you know, debt reduction. But we're just easing the increase in the debt. Ten years from now, as this plan goes, we're still going to have $7 trillion more in debt. So I guess the question is, uh, are we just, you know, paddling up the river the wrong way? Here? Well, I think we, we established a new way to do business. There have been all kinds of times. The country's had debt almost the entire history of the country. Right. And we've had this debt ceiling issue for years, but never before did we tie it uh, to future decreases in spending. And I, I had a chart, matter of fact, I, I put it on our website today, that if you did this every time the debt ceiling comes up for a decade, the same thing we did today, we'd be balanced in a decade. Is that so? So this is a path toward balance if we would just repeat. Does that repeat. include then revenue, Senator? Because the president seemed to intimate today when he spoke to the country after you guys settled this issue uh -huh. that the revenues were still on the table. I think he meant as soon as November, December, when this committee, commission, whatever you guys are calling it, gets together. That wouldn't include revenues. That would just be every time you had to increase the debt ceiling if you made a proportional decrease in spending no, I over guess the what next I'm decade. What, what this commission takes up, committee, I should say, takes up in yeah. Thanksgiving, that revenues should be and will be on the table. It's up to them to, to reject them, but they could be on the table. I think, so? I think it's hard between now and Thanksgiving for revenues to be on the table. And there are really two reasons. One, you have to have a bill that the Republican House will pass. Two, you have to deal with the current uh, anticipated revenue that happens after 2000 and January of 2013. And that law anticipates that the so-called Bush tax cuts, current tax policy for a decade, go away. So if you open that revenue door, Neil, I think you may create more problems than you solve you're because opening up another revenue suddenly you, you've gotcha. talked about revenue that you assume you're going to get until you open the door and say, well, we really aren't going to get that. Well, that, that would be even a deeper a, a future, The Congress has to deal with that at another okay. time, and even the Congress that's elected in November 2012. The next election that will have big consequences will okay. be that one. Senator, good to good see you. See you good again. to see you in Washington. Thank you very much. Glad you're here. All right. Glad to see you very much.